What happened in Fadama? Well, uh, uh, thank you. Um, and, and let me say a very good evening to your uh, viewers at mm -hmm. home. And uh, so you recall that um, we launched a three days of uh, cleanup exercise in the whole of Accra because we wanted to take advantage of the lockdown period to change the way people behave in the city and also clear some areas of the fault that has engulfed because we continue to clean. But this is a city that has a population, a resident population of 2.3 million. And there's an Accra. additional, yes. I thought it's five. Yes, and there's an additional population. I'm talking about Central Accra. Central Accra, okay. And um, there's an additional population of 2 million that comes into the city center every day. So you are talking about 4.3 million every day. You know, to do million people enter Accra every day from outside Accra. From outside Accra. Outside Central Accra or outside Accra Metropolis. Outside Accra Metropolis. Outside, outside Greater Accra. Accra. Not Greater Accra. You know, from like the east. You know, like uh, Amasaman. Those mm. in the peri urban areas. They also come into the city center. Okay. So during the day, you are talking about a population of about 4.3 million mm -hmm. in Accra. The video we are seeing yes, now is what happened yesterday. Exactly. So okay. I mean, and we went to Old Fatherman, and Old Fatherman. It will interest you to note that um, they, they have their own organization. Mm -hmm. That's a group that manages the whole township. They have a chairman, and there are 21 tribes, you know, with their chiefs that represent their council. And there's an NDC local chairman, an MPP local chairman, and then the Muslim heads. So this is a group that takes decision on behalf of old father man oh, they are that organized you know, they are very organized and it's important that you channel your things through them so that things can be worked out better and that's i'm explaining i'm giving you this background to appreciate the action that was taken now as part of our cleanup exercise we got to old father man and then the other channel which dredge masters has been given the contract to dredge they are unable to to go further because people had encroached part of the bank of the lagoon and the equipment is not able to assess the place. So Honorable Minister for Sanitation and my good self approached the leadership. Could you tell your people to move away from where they are temporarily so that we'll be able to dredge the, the Odo channel? Because the rains are about to start. And as a leader, there are tough decisions sometimes that you have to take. Mm -hmm. You know, in case we don't dredge, and the rain falls heavily. You understand that it's going to create a lot of chaos. There will be flooding in Accra, and in its impact will be much more than what we see. So there are compromises and sacrifices that people have to make occasionally for the greater good of all. So you of discuss us. with them that you want to be so, able to dredge. So that's the point. Okay. So so it is the leadership of old Fadama that engage the few people who are there, who are the, the people who are affected about close to between 150 to 200. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the leadership that engage them. What do they live in? What we are seeing? So, so what is this? This happened yesterday? It, this has been happening for the past uh, couple of, the, uh, um, about a week now. So what is that? Is it a tractor? What is it doing? It's dredging. So it's this dredging is a dredging the, master. The, um, yes, the, the Odor channel. Okay. So, so that's what it's creates space for the water. Create space for the water. So, so that it's removing it filth. Exactly. It's, generally filled. You know. So who are these people? So this, this is their community. So it no, is yeah, the... They, they are removing some of this roof. So it is the same people. It is not AMD that have gone there to demolish the structures. Mm -hmm. It is the community leadership that engaged the other people who voluntarily removed their structures over there. But we have not sent anybody to go and demolish as we do, you know, people who are occupying unauthorized places. But you, do, so, but you went to the military? Of course. Yeah, but if they're paying people who are doing their own thing, why do you need the military? And I'm saying that the military had been positioned... So these are the leaders? These are the leaders. The military had been positioned there for some time now. It's as part of the lockdown arrangement, mm -hmm. we decided to also place the military along that particular stretch. Mm -hmm. And that stretch, because, for instance, the yam sellers come onto the street, the tomato um, trucks also come to the street, and the unknown you know, trucks also come onto the street. So we want to decongest that place. So, and that is the essence of putting the military at that particular position. You recall that with the three days exercise, the military also supported us with their men to be able to, to clear the city of, of the but, but the places that you demolish, people live there like this one. Somebody was staying there. No, but you keep repeating that with demolish. And I'm saying that, <laughs> okay. yes, yeah, just, just So what's that yes, word to use? No, I'm saying that there's a voluntary removal 
of their oh voluntary. Union. They Yet. knew that it would be removed. Of course. They were part of the in process. Fact, in fact, let me also share with you the entire old fatherman, the Kole Lagoon, mm -hmm. that as a you know circle old fatherman. Mm -hmm. If you walk from seconds, opposite seconds, mm -hmm. through up to Galloway, you will not find structures along the along the bank of the of the lagoon. Mm -hmm. Because they are well organized and you knew that any time there is dredging, they will be affected. So the the community, the community group over there ensures that people do not go close to the bank of the lagoon. And these few people have gone close to the lagoon. You can send your cameras back there and start from opposite seekers and mm. go round the, the road. Go round and okay. come back to uh, Galloway and you will understand what I'm trying to say. So it is the leadership of the community and they are also very mindful of the fact that where they are living, they need to be very well organized in the setup so that they will not also create problems for the communities. Mm -hmm. And they will not create problems also for the city. So the leadership of the old father man, they decided to engage them as was proposed by us, because if they don't move, we won't be able to dredge the Kole Lagoon. And if we don't dredge the Kole Lagoon, what it means is that when it rains, there will be... Uh, the, 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 the greater number of people will be affected. Of course, you know, and it will go as far as... Um, Udona, mm -hmm. um, Sahara, and to Alajo areas. And you, I mean, last year, for instance, when it rains, we lost lives of people. That shouldn't happen. So there were no victims from yesterday's event? No. So those who We didn't to... go there. We didn't go there mm -hmm. to demolish anything. And I'm just surprised, you know, the media. Because, I mean, I've heard the media going there. Of course, people are affected by... Some people were disgruntled, and they will speak to the media that look, they were not happy with the fact, but it's the community leadership that had engaged them to some of these things. And that is what is being blown. Did but they, they it is not the normal, it is not, it is not the normal demolition that, you know, an assembly goes in, say you are occupying an authorized place and we come in with our bulldozers and come and pull down your, so you could see that the people are voluntarily removing their makeshift structures over there. That's what actually happened. So those whose structures have been removed, where are they going to be? Okay, so what, what we have done is, that is to provide them also with tent okay. in, that, in that area. So is there a park know. or something? There's a park there. Okay. There's a, in fact, they even have a community park. Mm -hmm. And in front of the community chairman, where any time we go there to meet, that's the, that's, the, that's the open place we always meet to engage the people. I was there this morning um, because we are also running a program with the community leadership and an NGO in the community to um, educate the, com the residents in the community about social distancing because it's one big issue also over there. And for them also to appreciate the fact that you need to, uh, they need to adhere to the protocols of washing their hands and running water and as well as um, using hand sanitizers yeah, yeah. because we provided them with some very little buckets. The, um, the, uh, uh, the NGO People's Dialogue has also provided them with um, a lot of. Um, so you put them in well. tents. Yes. How long can they stay in those tents? Well, uh, I, I think that the dredging will not last long. It's for a couple of weeks, and then I'm sure life will become normal. And they can come back to that place. Well, what we have what we have advised mm. is that because you see, when you come back to that place once again, what will happen in future? Any time we're going to dredge you are going to move you out again. Mm -hmm. And the community people themselves are not happy. If you engage the community leadership, the 21 tribal heads, the local party chairpersons on this matter, they can speak better to this issue, that it is their initiative. As much as they got encouragement from us because we have provided the equipment for the dredging of the place. Mm, that's interesting. Okay, we'll go back and find out. Let's talk you about sure your food distribution. Why are you distributing food that has been alleged by a Kobanda boy, looking for party cards before you share it? I mean, I look at the videos, and our concern is that people are rushing for the food, and they are violating the protocols of COVID-19. In those circumstances, I don't see how somebody will ask for party card before they get it. For the videos that we have seen, you can't ask for party card. But the allegation has been put on. Okay. Uh, so two things I like to deal with. The allegation of party cards. The manner in which the distribution is being done when people are fighting each other. Okay, so I'll deal with the issues in one. And I think that, let me start by saying that when we set off by distributing the food, mm -hmm. one thing 
that his excellency the president made it clear to all of us that we should make sure that the state food distribution is shared in a non-partisan way and i'll explain well, the president said that the president had said that to all of us so we are very mindful of it and that's why we responded because i mean if the president I mean, who, mayors, yeah, the, uh, MMDAs? all politicians and i'll explain okay. you know now especially those of us in office the ministers and the mmds you know as in chief executives what we've done is that the president had provided in fact the state had provided raw food to the faith-based organization in fact 60 percent of the food which is being shared have been shared by the churches and the and the uh, muslim council. And the muslim council oh that's interesting Oh, you're right about that. We can quote you. I'm saying 60%. so. 60%. About 60% of the food is being shared by them. Provided and by the government. Provided by the government. I and see. they are bagged. They are bagged. And, and there's an embossed sticker on it. Ghana flag, not for sale. That food being shared by the churches is being provided by the state. Because government does not want politicians to front the food distribution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this... Uh, the steps that the government took right from day one. Unfortunately, when the food was provided to the churches, it took them close to, you know, about three, four days to bag them because they were a lot. You know, but they had to bag them. But was written on what? Was it not written on the bag? No. You provided them with, the, like, 25 kilo, 50 kilo, and they have okay. to bag them. Of rice, okay. Add some rice, you know, add some uh, okay. beans. You gave, you gave them what? We gave them rice, we mm. gave them beans, we gave them maize, we gave them mackerel. Okay. We gave so them, they should put know, it together. So they put it together. Mm. That can take care of a household. Mm -hmm. And then they have a sticker which is embossed on it. And that's what is being done. Then there's another food which the gender ministry has contracted the school feeding caterers to also prepare and share it in the community. And that's, that's the hot meal. Okay. That's cooked food. Mm -hmm. That's the one day hot meal which is being mm -hmm. shared in the That food which is being cooked by the caterers, it's being shared by NADBO. Yes. And not politicians. It's being shared by NADBO. There's another food that is also How being shared. How are you shared. confident that in NADBO sharing, they are not segregating MPP and MDC. Oh, but they can tell you. In fact, look, even if you look at the composition of NADBO staff, mm -hmm. when N MPP took over, by 2016, all the NDC people that they recruited into NADBO, they went to parliament and changed the act and made them very permanent so you could not even sack them. So, okay. then, so even if you want to stretch the argument, you could see that Okay, so 99, the, most of the Madmo staff are inherited from 2016. Of course. You know, so you will assume that they are either MP, That's an assumption. NDC but I'm not looking at it from that spectacle. Okay, yeah. you know, but we have leaders as well. But it's, it's an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. So you want the agency in charge of emergency situation to do the food distribution. Mm -hmm. So we are not looking at the individuals that their party collects. But that's the thing. And then there's another food which is also being prepared by other agencies and given to the Ministry of Gender. And that's what we give it to the homelands and the Kayais. Mm -hmm. Because they don't live in the communities. If you come to Accra Central, around Ridge, um, Tema Station, okay, that those enclave, who those who sleep there, you know, you have, you have a lot of them. The street hawkers. Of course, you know, you have a lot of them. And about 5,000 of, of food is being shared every day in that particular enclave. That's you know, also the, hot meal? That's hot mm -hmm. meal. That's hot meal. Is that the where day. the violations are occurring? Well, that's what she is alleging. No, you I know. mean, the violations of the breach of the attrition situation where people are just touching each other and rushing and beating each other for the food. And well, that is not the only place I have seen on, on, in, on the yeah, media. Yeah, it's, it's all you over know, the country. And, 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 the and country. in fact, I will deal with that one because mm -hmm. three days ago, the the Ministry of Local Government have also come up with a guideline on the food sharing okay. that you should follow these protocols and ensure that you have a security mm -hmm. uh, that's the military to uh, assign to you to go and share the food. Oh, I see. And that's interesting. If the this is three days ago. Yes. And if the military and the police are unable to control the crowd, don't share the food. So this is an instruction from the Ministry of Local Government. And I'm sure if you observe for the past three days, you know, this so that problem is really solved well i haven't said it's solved entirely but I, I could see that it's coming down and we are comporting each other because in some instances some of the people that are also sharing the food they see crowd and they just be throwing the food you know to people as if we are in normal times we are not in normal times so that 
you know, directive is being strictly also adhered to. And in the sharing of the food, the military supports the sharing of the food around that particular enclave. In fact, there's a colonel that is in charge. In fact, the head of the 5BN, um, who is in Accra, assigned big military guides on the compound of Efua Sutherland Park. There's two military guides also that have been deployed at the uh, gender ministry because the people also go to the gender ministry because the food comes there first and then moved to Efua Sutherland Park. We are converging as Efua Sutherland Park because it is big, it is spacious, and you'll be able to observe the social distancing over there. Then part of the food, about 2,000, between 2,000 and 2,000, 500 packs is also sent to old father man every day and that one you send it to the community leadership you send the and food every, day. every day one meal uh, one for breakfast lunch or supper well we do we do lunch only we do lunch but then then again there are other organizations also that comes in to also do so for instance father campbell has a group yeah i know that i know about you father know Campbell's group. and they provide breakfast for the same people in that for enclave, the same community in that enclave you know mm -hmm. so we are also so mindful father campbell breakfast government lunch who does supper well i don't think we don't do supper you know the food comes around two o'clock that's a lot so, of yeah. work it's a lot of work Every but there's morning a lot you of have to provide food for 400 000. there's a lot of people that are involved in this food but distribution you are still not able to but cover me, all of them but let me also because say president mahama is covering some so let me say this uh, mm -hmm. and i would i would like to comment also on the president mahama team. now the state food distribution is being done in this structure and there's nothing partisan about it however individuals politicians and philanthropists MPs are MPs. also sharing their own food. MPs and aspiring MPs. And it appears that my friends on the other side are confusing the benevolence of individual mm. members of parliament and oh, parliamentary oh, oh, candidates, candidates that are also doing their own food distribution. Because if I am a member of oh, parliament... I get it, I get it. If I am a member of parliament in my community and the food that the state is providing is not enough and the people are coming to me, and I have the resources. I will organize my resources and also share. So that is the confusion that people seem to propagate around. I think that uh, His Excellency, the former president, is also going to share food. Is well, he going to share it to only NDC no, people? President Mahama, when he's sharing his food, he doesn't. There's no NDC tag on it. No, but that's the point I'm trying to say. That there is no MPP or NDC tag anywhere. Okay, so the point you're but making it is that the, point the, that the members is, of parliament, yes. an aspiring MP, MPP, are about to do primaries. Yeah. So an aspiring member of parliament for the MPP. Um, if he's sharing the food, he puts his logo on it. No, there's nothing like that. Yeah, but I've seen that. I've seen Rice with the uh, vote for Ahmed. Well, it's that that is own that is his own arrangement. But that's the point own. you are making that that one is different. That is from his, what his own arrangement. Is that is his own arrangement. I have seen just two okay. Days. So if the MP goes to two days Clotty, ago, Clotty Colley constituency, yes. for instance, and he's sharing and he's a uh, uh, Philip Addison. Yes. And he, he puts <laughs> Philip Addison on it. Philip Addison is not there. I know that, but he puts <laughs> Philip Addison on it. Yeah. If an NDC person comes, would he deny him? And if he denies him, are you telling me that that's, no, that's not a problem for the government? No, I, I'm, not, I'm, say, I'm establishing a point yeah. that we should not confuse the government food distribution yeah. with what individual politicians are doing. But that's also what, but it is so, the government that can bring... So you don't blame the government on this? No, you can blame the you, government because the, the president should call on his parties. Parliamentary oh, but there are NDC people also doing the same. Oh, just, three, just two, three days ago, okay. I watched UTV. Okay. There was an NDC candidate in, uh, in Bronga Afu who is sharing, including Veronica Bucket, and you have him and your mama stickers all over. Oh, wow. And he went and presented it. There's that, what is wrong about it? They're also doing this. It was on, shown on UTV. I watched it on UTV myself two days ago. That's interesting. So it is not, it's, it's nothing new about it. I am saying that this is something that politicians on their own in their quest to show off and reach out to their constituents, they also want to tell their people that this is what we are doing for you. So I'm sure when Zenato Rollins, um, Honorable Zenato Rollins went to share the food, the man that was standing beside him is his constituency chairman. He, yeah. he went to share, she went to share the food with her constituency executives. Is there anything wrong with it? No. So why are you complaining? I think you have to remove the speck from your eye before you attempt to accuse other people. But, so that's my point. But the issue is whether they are giving the opponent some of the food that's uh, that's what i think is really the issue well i i i i'm saying that um individual 
politicians are sharing their food. The food can never be enough because, look, when in this period of lockdown, mm. there are many people that live by day. They wouldn't ordinarily go for food for anyone. Now, because they, are in, they have been locked down, they are unable to, to survive. So all of them even come for food one way or the other. In fact, during the Easter break, I've been on the food for the past two weeks. I've not even had a good sleep. During the Easter break, I couldn't get food in town. I have to rely on the food which is being prepared. Also in the afternoon to be, to be able to for feed yourself. myself. For myself. And your family? No, 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 no. It's not my family. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, you know. so, so I'm just saying that um, uh, and, and appealing to my, to, my, to my friends who are active mm -hmm. in doing politics, that they shouldn't confuse the state support that we are giving with their own politics and the local issues that they are doing. It's the same thing that my, my, my senior, my senior uh, uh, colleague, um, Honorable Kowanapo, is complaining of. Yeah. It's the same MPP parliamentary candidate. He's preparing his own food. He's also sharing his own food. And I think on that day... The point is that maybe when and, they are sharing food, they should give to everyone. And then I think it, it shouldn't I, matter whether I, the person is look, a or MP. And, and I can tell you for a fact mm -hmm. that it is difficult to go and share food on partisan... I, I think I see your it, point. It, it will be very, very difficult. It, it will be practically impossible because for you people to do don't so. have card. In Ghana, we don't have our card. On it will be practically impossible yeah. for you to go and share. And if you ask me in the queue to collect food, whether I'm MPP and I know you're MPP, I'll say I'm MPP. That's that's just simple. In, in fact, I have also shared some food mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and I targeted old people. Yeah. You know, the aged in mm -hmm. the community. So I prepared about um, five thousand pieces of. Um, and five kilos um, of rice and, and oil, and I shared it. And that's my target. And when you went to the committee, there are people who called, who called and um, expressed their displeasure, that they are young people. Why am I targeting the, uh, the older oh, wow. ones yeah, as well? So you, we get all but kinds of... the older of, ones should go hungry. <laughs> we get all kinds of feedback from the is people. Is this sustainable? Doing. You know, I've seen an article that has been published by Ken Oforiata today. Yes, uh, I've, I've just read it this yeah, evening. I mean, what we are doing, is it sustainable? Well, we, we are because not in normal. Not, we're going to crash. We are, well, we, I, I think that um, if we don't do this, trust me, Paul, I live in the city, and what I have seen within this period of lockdown, if government does not support like the way you are doing I don't know what is going to happen. Have Look, you seen the story about Tanzania? Let me, let me, let me say... The World Bank is congratulating Tanzania for this. Let me, say, let me say this. The food comes around 2 o'clock, especially for the homelets. Yeah. If by 2.30, the food is not ready, go around the Ridge National Theater enclave. You will see them. If your car is passing, they are harassing people for money. People that ordinarily, on the, on the normal day, you won't notice them. But because of the lockdown, you are seeing a lot of lockdown. You drive around town, yeah. there's a lot of people. So you don't really know that there are people who sleep here. There are a lot of homeless. Yeah. There are a lot of junkies around. You mean we are gravitating towards some violence if we are not careful? If we are, if I'm not saying we are gravitating. I'm saying that if we had not taken that decision. Yeah, it would have been very serious. It would have been very serious. But if it's not sustainable for a long time, but the lockdown has to continue. Do well, we know? I, I think, I, well, I, I don't know the, the position of... Of, of the presidency, but I think that it is very important for us to continue as long as we have the capacity. Indeed, from next week, we're going to focus more on the raw food than the, the because that, food, that yeah. takes care of a household for yeah. a long, yeah, for a long longer period. time. Yes, because this cook food thing. Yeah, so food. that that is a directive, and every assembly is taking um, delivery of some uh, some items, mm -hmm. and we've seen some. Um, companies also that are coming in also to support in this particular endeavor. And let me say that if we don't do some of these things, I don't know how this country is going to look like because people need food to survive. And I think I've come to appreciate the planting for food and jobs. Yes, yes, and the yes. Because we are benefiting I mean, from it now. We, we thought that, a disaster we thought that it, would have been, it was one of the political things that we were doing. But Almost all the food that we are getting is from buffer stock. And it's locally produced. It's locally. In fact, the, the, the rice is uh, Ghana rice, mm -hmm. the beans, beans you know, everything from Ghana. Yeah. And it's buffer stock that is supplying this food. I so see. if we had not gotten buffer stock, I mean, I'm sure we would have been eating whatever we grow every day. And <laughs> in these times that um, we needed um, food badly, I, I don't know where we're going to get the food from. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very yeah, much. It's a pleasure. I like your mask. Did you sew it locally? Well, so what we have done is that as part of the protocols yes. um, that we've, it, um, WHO has instituted, that um, we should continue washing our hands under running water, we should use hand sanitizer, and then uh, maintain social distancing. We've also come to realize that um, trans transmission of of the disease is also done through people coughing, sneezing, and speaking mm. too louder, and then the droplets falls on your face, and then mm. the openings around your face you go through there. So we've just launched Wear Your Nose Mask campaign, and we launched it yesterday. We distributed about 10,000 pieces of oh, it, okay. and we've um, called on people also to do the same. And there are dressmakers and tailors in our communities that we can contract them to sew some of these things for us. Uh, there are a few ones that people have, have sewn and they are selling at a high price because it's very fanciful. But this is not a time to 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 engage in a very fanciful um, um, we just attire. Need it. You, you, just know, you just it. need it because I don't know when you wear your best dress where you're going to because you are actually in a lockdown. When you walk on the streets, nobody is going to see anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> so it is very it's important. Not time for fashion. It's not time for fashion. It's time for us to kill the virus. So that is what we're trying to do. I want to make sure that we reach out to as many people as possible. Our major constituent is the market, the the truck truck drivers and the ordinary the truck pusher and the those who live in the communities and we are appealing to people also that have the world with that to do so we have we understand that central government is also trying to do same but we are launching we have launched this aggressive campaign for people to change their attitude that as you walk to public places you must wear your mask it's very important it's very simple you wear it like this yeah i'm sure we are good to go and it's beautiful very nice. Thank you. That was uh, uh, Mayor Ajesua, Accra Mayor, the Honorable Ajesua is the Mayor of Accra Metropolitan Authority. <laughs>